So of all my neighbors, the most interesting person we uh, have as our neighbor is this guy named Bill. And he has 80 acres, or he had 80 acres of forest. And he was always over there burning because he had heard that in South America, the Aztecs used to burn the forest floor and this made their soil extremely uh, fertile. In fact, there is a later, much later, I did learn about the terra preta soils of South America. And in fact, adding charcoal to the soil does make the soil very fertile, but he just burned everything underneath the forest, like under the forest floor for, for 15, 20 years. And the soil there was so awful, there was nothing because he just burned everything off everywhere. Um, and he would do this so often and he would do it without water. He would do it on windy days. He had, I think, two or three different forest fires happen uh, while he was burning. <laughs> Fortunately, it never hopped the road and came to our house. But uh, now our area is considered like a medium crime area just because this one guy keeps burning all the time. Uh, so anyway, this man lived uh, there in a yurt for many years and then he moved away to take care of his mother and he decided that he wanted to start a commune. So he made a website advertising his commune and when I was around 12 years of age, the first hippie showed up to this commune. Uh, of course, there was only w one person there, which was him. His name was Brian and uh, he was like, I don't know, maybe 19 or 18 and he started growing shiitake mushrooms and he did so much work cutting down all these trees and like setting up this whole mushroom operation. And then Bill just got tired of him and made him leave after like two years. Um, uh, and then he would just show up periodically and just like be bitter about Bill kicking him off the land. Uh, I, every once in a while I'll run into him again in town. He's got like, hair down to his knees by now and it's like all dreadlocked and goofy looking, but still bitter about getting kicked off of his shiitake mushroom farm. Um, and then we had, there were there were multiple people who were just there for really brief periods of time. Then there was a really uh, neat couple who they actually built this like underground hobbit house, which, uh, which was like a six sided log cabin, which then they covered in soil and it had a, 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 a skylight in the middle of it. So uh, you could go inside and it was like lined with bookshelves and then there was just natural light coming from the center. Uh, and the front of it was all masonry. It was such a cool thing. But they also were growing mushrooms there and my parents could never remember their names. So we always just referred to them as the mushroom people. Um, so those people lived there. And then after that, there was a young couple with a couple of little kids and uh, and they lived there for about a summer and they were trying to do some kind of landscaping project where they were putting down all this this cardboard and they were trying to make a garden, but it, it never did anything. Uh, and, um, and then they made this sandbag house that was like shaped sort of like a peanut. Um, but they made it in an area where there was a spring in the ground. So the water was like seeping out of the ground <laughs> inside of their house. And then it got to be like winter time. And then they were making this house and it was freezing cold and they were camping and finally we just uh, had them come and live in one of our rental houses and they gave up and left after uh after several months and then uh my most favorite couple who lived there came they were around my age at that time i was in my early 20s so um they were there and they uh had just come from an ashram out in california and um and they were trying to do all this permaculture stuff but they were kind of like the people who were like oh look at this trash it can't be thrown away we can use this and so they like brought so many pots and like random pieces of stuff to the underground house and they just filled up the house with all kinds of stuff and then they had this garden and that was when there was the forest fire and then the firemen found their marijuana plants, which at that time marijuana wasn't illegal in Michigan. And then they were worried about this. And then there was the worst winter ever. It was like 2014 and like the winter was from October, middle of October until like end of May was when the snow finally melted. And they were living in this underground house, but it was not, all the heat would go out the, out the, sunroof 
And so they were, they were like hiking like a quarter mile through the woods to their house every day through like waist deep snow. And they had this uh, vehicle, which was not good in the winter time. And they would just hang out in the library because it was warm during the day. And finally they gave up around March and drove away. And I don't even know quite where they went, but um, yeah, after that, we had a few different temporary people. And then eventually uh, Bill was going to sell this property and he was going to sell it to some, um, oh, what's it called? BMX racing people for making a racetrack. And my parents freaked out. And uh, and then and they ended up selling it to like some PhD guy who, uh, who was doing some kind of like sustainable project there. But actually it just pretty much sits empty property now. But um, yeah, so when I was a kid, I had like a progressive hippie commune across the street from my house um, with very interesting people coming through all the time. And I